Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another house video. Today's video is a video that I've been wanting to make for a little while now and it is going to be all about how I actually turned my house into an investment property. So if you guys don't know, quick backstory, I purchased my townhouse the start of last year, 2020. I mainly purchased this house as an investment property or that was like my intention. I ended up living in it so I wouldn't have to pay stamp duty for the first six to nine months sort of thing. I started renting it out in October last year. So I have had it rented out since then. So I guess a little over nine months now. I have been through a bit and I thought this would be a really good informational video for you guys who are wanting to kind of, I guess, do the same. When I was wanting to turn my house into an investment property, I feel like there wasn't many videos out there from personal experiences so that's why I kind of wanted to make this video and if you do have any questions like feel free to ever message me on Instagram too. In this video I'm going to give you like exact numbers, I'm going to tell you pretty much what I earn, everything like that. I don't even care so just respect that but I am like an open book if you have got any more questions you want to ask but let's get into the video. Maybe make like timestamps. I will try and fill my description box with loads of information. I am going to start with like how I did my market research, what happened, real estates, what's happened. I've also already had a shitty tenant. So I'm going to give you all of the spills throughout this video and how good it is being a landlord now. <laughs> So let's start with how you actually turn your house into an investment property. So there are a few things that you have to make sure that your house is like ready to go for someone to live in it. Little things like you have to have like working order taps, you have to have all the locks, everything fixed. You have to obviously have keys for everything. Your house has to be clean. Your backyard has to be like pretty much mowed or set up for them. Smoke alarms have to be checked. The the townhouse that I did buy was rented out as an investment property for like 10 years already. So when I purchased my townhouse, I knew that it was pretty much ready to be rented out. I did do a few changes before I rented it out. I painted the place. I changed all my door handles, changed the kitchen door handles. I fixed the like closet. I did the backyard. I planted some plants. Yeah, there wasn't a hell of a lot that I did really have to do. So that was really good. First thing that I did was ask all of my friends and family who have an investment property. So that really helped quite a lot. But the first thing that I wanted to do was like find a good real estate agent. Um, I definitely don't have one and I won't be re-signing with them if I'm being really honest. I've been stuffed around twice now with them. So it's just, it's great. I'll get into that maybe in the end of the video, but I really didn't want to pay a lot with real estate fees. They can charge a crazy amount. So what they do is they actually charge a percentage. So my real estate charges a 5.5% and that was like the lowest percent that I managed to get. They also gave me a discount of like 1% because I purchased my house from them. So you'll find that with a lot of places where you purchase your house from. So say you purchase it from this company and they also do rentals. Because they're kind of like getting you to transition into their rental property, they give you like a discount because you've already purchased a home from them. So I've heard of a lot of people doing that. So I just basically signed with my real estate that I purchased my house from. I first gave them a call. I was like, hey, my name is Kimberly. I want to rent out my house. I've actually purchased my home from you back in January. And then she forwarded me through to the rental lady. And I was just like so honest. I was like straight up I was like hey I've never ever rented a house or I've never been a landlord so I'm wanting you to give me as much information as possible. She was actually really helpful on the phone I will be honest she was very helpful but there were so many little things that she just didn't even tell me and that was the annoying thing about it because I was so honest to her I was like I've never ever rented. So I told her about it she was like okay perfect um, we worked out a few dates so keep in mind when you call 
call your real estate. It took me three weeks for me to even be able to rent the place. Like they had to do an inspection and then it couldn't get rented out for like another three weeks. So I would definitely call them like maybe a month before you actually want to start renting out the place so they can then find like a tenant because I think it took a little over a week for them to put it up on realestate.com. We use the same photos from my listing when I bought my house. However, if you wanted to get new photos, say you've done the place up or the photos are quite old and crap, they were going to cost $550 to get a professional photographer and then you get charged a fee. I just opted to use the same photos. We did it when my house got listed twice. The photos were pretty good and people are gonna know that the photos are gonna be look really different compared to when you see the house. So for me, my photos, I had only improved the photos. So when someone came in and looked at the place, I had done all like new blind furnishings. I had changed the handles and the kitchen. So I guess when they came and viewed the property, my house was already looking better than the photos did online. Yeah, so I had to read through the document and this is another thing right so she was like okay it's a 5.5 percent the takings of the place that's what they take as their fee and then I think the fee is like $13.50 on top of it like a management fee so already they're taking 5.5 percent of my rent as well as $13.50 as a management fee I got the contract and it's really important for you guys to obviously read through your contract because when I read it it was like six percent and I called them up and I was like hey just checking in uh you said it was 5.5 percent now it's six percent and she's like it's five percent five percent but then you have to pay GST and I was like oh great so another thing that I was just annoyed about because I was like why didn't you just tell me that over the phone why didn't you say hey it's 5.5 percent but you've got to pay GST on top of it I was just like of course but I personally if I had to go through this situation again I would be calling around other real estate agents I had asked a few of my friends and a few of them were paying like six or seven percent so I thought I was getting a deal 5.5 percent but I'm only now realizing that the percent and the way that they care for your property are completely different and like if you're just paying a low percent then their care factor for the property is so low so that's what's happened with me yeah I would shop around and even probably now I'd pay a little bit of a higher percent knowing that they're gonna look after my property more <laughs> then I read through the document and then we worked out when I could get my house leased so it was three weeks after I called her pretty sure she started advertising the open home when the listing went up so I had to sign the documents and then the listing went up a following week later and then we worked out the open home dates I'm pretty sure yeah so what they did with mine they did like an open home and I think they did three open homes for the first listing I don't think they moved into the fourth week or something like that but yeah so it already took a little bit of um, organizing that through those three to four weeks I had to do a few checks so they had to do a smoke alarm they had to make sure the water was in place I think the smoke alarm was $99 and the water check was $119 or something they had to try and meter it which it was so annoying right they said to me that we need to put a meter on the water and then I later found out that my tenant won't be paying the water rates it was me and I was like well why did I waste $119 to get it metered when you guys should have known that um, being in a townhouse complex that I personally have to pay for the water so that was another thing if you guys have a townhouse or a strata complex like a, an apartment you have to pay your water rates however if you have an existing like house on land you can push the water rates to the tenant itself um so that was another annoying thing but it happens I guess that they had the open homes organized I had to drop the keys off so my real estate agent had a set of keys and then she was just gonna let herself in and show everyone the open home um, so then what happened was we ended up, I think I had nine applicants and I then got a call from my real estate agent. She went through all of them. I think she only told me 
about four though. Um, your real estate agent will try and do like checks for you, which is good. So they will look at their rental history. They'll look at what they've previously rented before, how long they've rented for. They'll look at their pay slips. So when you go to submit to rent a place, you have to submit, I'm pretty sure your three last pay slips as well as like your rental history. And it's all online now. I'm pretty sure that real estate agent can browse all that. So I had nine people the first time and I ended up having, like I said, yes to this girl that was I think 39 and she was like a single mum and her income was high. Like her income was so high that I was just like, okay, cool, perfect. I know she's going to pay my rent, right? So then we signed her up. She ended up paying four weeks rent as a bond. And then I think she had to pay two weeks rent in advance. And that's how they did it. Every single month I get like a rental report. So in my first report, I I think she started renting at the 1st of October and I ended up getting like no money. <laughs> And this is why I'm going to break it down to you why it is quite expensive the first month you are renting out your property. So I get $4.30 a week rent for my place. So your real estate agent actually takes your first week rent and a little bit extra. So they ended up taking $481 to find a new tenant. So that was like their fee because they found me a new tenant basically. Let alone they you still have to pay them the 5.5. Um, so they took that amount and out of it I had $99 to get the smoke alarm checked. These are like my first bills and then I had that $119 for the water meter um, and then I had a $71 fee to get my lease like drawn up and then a $33 fee for my signature or something like that. I don't even know what it was. It said the signing of the lease was $33. I then didn't know um, my real estate agent actually will pay all my bills. So then they paid like my strata bill and they paid my council rates and my water rates. I must have been like two or three weeks behind and they had already paid. So at the start, I was just like, what the hell? Like, why didn't my real estate agent tell me that they pay all my bills? But now it is the best thing ever. I would recommend it to everyone. My real estate agent pays all of my bills that involve me renting out a house and then I get the money after. So it's so good that I don't have to worry about it. And any money that I get, I just pay it off on the mortgage and I pretty much pay the mortgage myself. And then any rent that I get, I just load it on if that makes any sense. <laughs> it just works out really good because you just don't have to worry about it. And the way I look at it is I'm paying them. Sorry, my, my camera just cut off. So hopefully I remember what I was talking about. So in my contract, anything that happens to my place under $500, they can like say yes to it. Um, but anything over $500, they have to give me a call and ask for approval. I don't know if this is like the case for every single um, tenant, but I have asked asked about it and they now just give me a call when anything happens because I had a little bit of a drama with them and I was just like look is it okay if you just call me when anything happens because I may be able to fix it myself so that's the good thing like where you can opt it you should be able to either hire out your like own general repairs too or they can just organize it a lot of the case they just do it for me when I was having plumbing problems they sorted it out so that was really good and then I I just paid the fee. Keep in mind some rental properties like they charge like a higher fee. I don't know. Mine was like pretty reasonable but I have heard it from like my other family members where they personally have had I don't know if the tradie overcharges them or like it just worked out like that but I have said to my real estate agent hey I want to be like informed if anything does happen. So that is another thing to keep in mind. You do have the option to ask and to tell them that you want to carry out any general repairs because a lot of the time my dad could help me out um, and go to the property too. So it could save me a little bit of money and not have to bill someone else. 
And then now I want to talk a little bit about how my insurance is and how my bills are basically. So I have landlord insurance that is $500 a year. A lot of the places you can do landlord insurance and building insurance and it is a cheaper price. However, because I have a strata complex, my building insurance is included in that. So I, I guess I didn't really save money bundling them up together. Yeah. So now I just pay the tenant insurance. I didn't have that up till recently like till last week so many people like it's like a mixed review on some people because some people are like you still have to go to the tribunal and chase up your money and then other people are like no it's like the best thing ever like the hard thing about it was I actually couldn't get it because when COVID happened a lot of these companies like Terry Shield and all these people that dealt with landlords and it only came up at the start of the year that I could actually get out a premium with them I ended up signing up like last week so that's the good thing about it I have that insurance I have to pay my water rates each quarter my water rates is $243 each quarter and I have to pay my council rate which are $263 each quarter I pay all of my bills quarterly because it actually works out almost the same I think the council rates are almost the same and then strata you can pay yearly but it's like almost the same so I I just pay all of my bills every quarter. It is good, but it is so bad because every single month I have something come up. So every month, like I'll have my strata one month, I'll have my um, counter rates one month and then the next month. So it feels like I'm always paying something and I never get my full amount of rent. And then I have my strata, which is 650 each quarter. So then all of those bills can actually now be almost like a tax write-off because I have an investment property. That way, all of these bills that I do pay actually come off on my tax return and it actually works out to be a tax deductible. I pay like 12 grand interest each year um, and then that's how it works with negative gearing. So I get 430 a week for my rent which works out to be like 22k a year. Then my 12 grand interest takes off that amount and then all of my bills and then I'm only left paying tax on like four or five grand basically. So that's how it works for like an investment property. So all of the interest that you're paying on your loan also works out as a tax deduction as the income. So any of the rent is classified as my income. So my normal income from my job and then my rent gets topped on my income. So say on my normal job, I get 50K and my rent, I get 20K. Now my income is 70K and then all of my bills, all of my interest, it is now taking it down a notch and I don't have to pay as much tax because it's basically like, a tax right off. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. Um, I know it's a little bit confusing but that's how it works and that's why people opt to have an investment property. Let's get into the second part of the video. I feel like this is a little bit of a story time and what it's like being a landlord. So I had my first tenant. She was there from October to March. She signed a six month lease. So you do like a three month checkup and I personally went and did the checkup with my real estate agent they have to let you know I'm pretty sure I don't know if COVID if you can go but I went there and I went and looked at my property while she was living there I met my tenant and I did like the three month check with my real estate agent and then her lease expired in like February or something like that and my real estate never did the six month check and they never like asked to re-sign the lease which is okay like I probably should have pushed for it I didn't know I I just assumed that they pushed to keep them in a lease I guess but it doesn't really matter but I would have just loved to do the six month checkup so I could have seen the house like a month later she was a week behind on her rent then she gave me 21 days notice to like leave the property because her lease was up and that's fine that's totally fine so if you want to know how many days notice they have to give being a tenant you have to give 21 days notice to your landlord yeah she calls me up on the Monday and She's like, hey, your tenant hasn't paid rent for four weeks. And I was like, are you serious? 
She's like, yep, yeah, so um, yeah, you, you don't have any bond money. So then my real estate agent calls me. She's like, hey, um, just letting you know, uh, I've come and inspected the property. She was supposed to have everything done Monday and the place is not rental ready. It is very dirty. There is a lot of work that still needs to be carried out. And she had three days to do it because I had my new tenant going in on the Friday. And then I was just like, okay, um, all right, well, have you tried to call? Call her like what have you done she's like yep we've called her she's not answering the calls I've emailed her I was like okay so what happens now so they're like all right I'm gonna have to get quotes for everything to be done um and then I was like okay perfect so you just take take it out of the bond money and she was hey just letting you know she's four weeks behind on rent all of this damage and cleaning and the carpet shampooed it's all out of your own pocket and I was just like are you serious I was just like like you have to try harder to get she's like she's not answering our calls and then she's like you need landlord insurance and I was like look I don't have landlord insurance because when I rented my place I couldn't get it with COVID like they weren't allowing premiums calls me the next day says hey I got a hold of your tenant so my tenant was like to the real estate hey I've, I'm in hospital I'll get discharged tomorrow which would be the Wednesday I'll come and clean it up um, because apparently they threatened her to saying that they're gonna put a bad strike on her name so then they were like okay cool you can have it till Friday as long as everything's done and we'll do the report on Friday. Get the call from my real estate agent on Friday. Hey, nothing's done. I got a quote for the cleaning, $700. I got a quote to get the carpet shampooed and a bomb because she had a pet, another $400. And I was just like, what the hell? What the hell? So she then telling me it is like, I think it was like over $1,000. Plus I've already lost four weeks rent, which I guess is gonna come out of the bond. That happened because my new tenant is, has to be in the house at four o'clock. I had already asked for them to push the tenant back and apparently she had everything organized, which look, I understand, but I actually had to still pay for everything. I had to give her a free week's worth of rent because the house just wasn't at its standard and I was already out of pocket a thousand bucks, $430 because I had to give her a free week's rent and then I was already behind on four weeks rent. I ended up actually getting my bond money back last month it took three months and I am still out of pocket like maybe $1,500 so my first tenant was a really bad go because she did not leave the place clean as possible and it was so stressful the worst part about having a rental property is people actually just have no pride for it I am so proud and that is like my little baby I worked so hard to be able to afford a property like that and I guess some people just don't treat it like their own home and they just don't care and that's what's happened with mine so apparently Currently my old tenant is now going to get a black mark. They've chased her for money. It didn't happen. I had to pay it all myself. She also had keys that she never gave back. So I had to pay, I think, $350 to get all new keys. So that was a little bit of a tenant. Look, lucky there was no internal damage. There was no holes in walls, but there was no paint chips. There was nothing like that. She put a screw in the wall to hang something up, but that was about it, really. So lucky. It could have been a lot worse. I was just out of pocket. So now I've got a new tenant and I think she's going to almost be in there for three months. I would love to go do the three month check. She is like a single mom with two kids. So hopefully everything goes well. I have learned now guys to have everything in writing. There are a lot of times that she was going to be out on this date and then I asked them and she's still in there and stuff. So I definitely recommend to have everything in writing. That's pretty much what's happened with me. Um, other than that, now I'm just keeping all of my respect. Seats. I'm trying to make this as good of an investment property as possible. I'm still just on top of the real estate agent doing those regular checks and hopefully my new tenant stays in there. She looks after the place and hopefully I don't have the same problem that I did with my first tenant. So I feel like that is everything covered for today's video. If you do have any further questions, feel free to message me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys! Bye.